The Princess and the Frog is Disney's first 2D animated feature since 2004's flop, Home on the Range. It's loosely based on the 2002 young adult novel The Frog Princess by E.D. Baker. The Princess and the Frog is reminiscent of Disney's Renaissance, the time period between 1988 and 1999 where Disney created awesome movies based mostly on fairy tales. Let's see if this one brings the magic back. The Princess and the Frog focuses on Tiana, a young woman who dreamed and wished upon a star since childhood to have her own restaurant called Tiana's Place. It was mostly a promise she kept with her father, who had died in war. The main story takes place after World War I in New Orleans. Tiana works hard in a restaurant, saving every penny to one day open her dream restaurant. When Tiana works hard for her cash, pretty boy Prince Naveen has been cut off from his family's fortune, so he must marry or work to support himself. He chooses the former, and visits New Orleans with his butler Lawrence by his side to make his way and marry a rich girl named Charlotte. Meanwhile, Dr. Facilier, also known as the Shadow Man, hears of the prince's arrival, turns him into a frog, and lures Lawrence away, turning him into a prince with voodoo magic. As a voodoo magician, the Shadow Man has darkness on his side, and knowing Lawrence will take the place in marrying the rich Charlotte, they can split the money and take over New Orleans. Now that Prince Naveen's a frog, he asks Tiana to kiss him and turn him human again. But unfortunately, things don't go as planned. The Princess and the Frog is a delight from start to finish. Its moral story harkens back to old Disney classics like Wishing Upon a Star and Believing in Yourself, but grounds them with some truth for today's audience. For example, Wishing Upon a Star isn't always going to work. A little hard work comes into play also. We're introduced to the typical funny Disney duo, Louis, a jazz-playing alligator, and Ray, a Cajun firefly who's in love with a distant firefly known as Evangeline. They're somewhat uninspired characters, but they do the trick to tell the story. Dr. Facilier, the Shadow Man, is probably one of the coolest Disney villains since the Lion King, Scar. This guy's sneaky, manipulative, and has magic on his side. And the coolest thing about him is that his shadow actually has an evil life of its own, giving him his infamous nickname. The animation and backdrops of the setting don't seem up to par with Disney classics of the past. They just don't seem as colorful and detailed as they once were. Compare this movie with Disney's Tarzan and you'll know what I mean. Most importantly, this movie has good music to tell the story, but it didn't have me leaving the theater singing A Whole New World or Hakuna Matata. What I mean is it didn't have one, not one memorable song in it. The music is what makes these movies, and The Princess and the Frog didn't deliver here. I still highly recommend seeing this one for a great Disney escape, but don't expect a classic like Disney's Renaissance. I suppose so far, those movies can't be beat.